The Lord be with you. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And welcome to worship today of the living God. Today we extend a special welcome to all of you youth who are watching at home. We miss having you here. We miss being with you. Welcome to the children who we miss running around and filling the space with their joy and their presence. Welcome to those who are watching from their nursing home today. We are so glad to be with you. And welcome to those who are physically and socially distancing at home. We are delighted to be with you. We extend a special warm welcome to the Reverend Kate Morrison and to all of those members of John Calvin Presbyterian Church. Reverend Kate. Yes, good morning. We are so glad to be here worshiping with our friends at First Presbyterian Church of Salisbury. We do thank you for joining us wherever you may be this Sunday morning. We are grateful that you are here, that you are joining us as we worship the living God. We also especially want to extend a hand of grace to all of our friends who are joining us who may not know about faith, do not know where they are in their walk of faith, we are grateful that you have joined us for worship this day, and we ask that you stick with us, that this would be a joyful and a worshipful occasion for you as we are trying out all sorts of new things in this time in our world. So we ask that you be with us this morning, that you stay with us, that mm -hmm. you allow the Spirit to move in and through this worship, and that goes for all of our friends that are joining us from wherever you may be. As you settle in, we invite you to text or call or FaceTime family and friends to invite them to come and worship alongside of you. Although physically removed, we can be united in the spirit and like and share this YouTube video so that the word about Jesus Christ's good news might spread not just through our community, but far beyond. Friends, let us join in worshiping the living God together now. Our first scripture this morning comes from the Old Testament book of Joshua. We will be reading the first chapter from the first verse through verse 9. This is right after Moses has died and Joshua is now taking control and leading the people. Let us now listen for God's word. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to you, to the Israelites, every place that I, excuse me, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon I have given to you, as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, 
to the great sea, in the west shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous. For you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, friends. This is the time when we would normally invite our children to come forward and sit up here with us. but we welcome all to join us right now. We miss seeing you very, very much. And for those of you who we have not met yet, we look forward to the time that we might see you face to face. Things are a little different right now. You may be kind of excited that you're staying at home. Maybe you're getting to play more with your adults. Maybe you are getting a little more screen time than normal. Or you may be feeling sad or even scared. Maybe you miss your school friends or you miss going to your sports stuff and your art classes. Maybe your adults are yelling a little bit more or they don't have time to play because they're working even while they're home. Maybe you have heard your adults talking or stuff on the news that is confusing or scary. Or maybe you are feeling happy and excited and scared and sad all at the same time. That can happen. We can be happy that we are not sick, but sad for those who are. We can be scared about all the changes that are taking place but excited to have extra snuggle time with the ones we love. Whatever you are feeling, it's okay. And you can talk to an adult or a friend about what you are thinking and feeling. Last week, Pastor Kate talked about prayer, talking to God, and how that can help us to feel better. And I hope that you're doing that. But sometimes, God seems far away, and we wonder if he even cares about us. When I was a little girl, I had a favorite lovey. You guys may have favorite loveys too. This was my Richie Bear. And he would make me feel safe and less scared when I would give him a hug. And a few months ago, when I was so sick and couldn't be at the church, I had a blanket that I would curl up with every day. Even adults need things to help them remember that they are not alone. So I have something I would like you to do for me today after worship. I want you to find a piece of cloth, probably a scrap piece of cloth, and check with your parents before this, and have them cut off a piece of it that you can keep in your pocket. Or head outside and find a rock and use a marker or some paint to draw a heart or a cross on it. Or I want you to take a bunch of sticky notes 
and write, God loves you on them. And then put them all over your house, on the refrigerator door, on your bathroom mirror, even on your brother's door to his bedroom. And when you feel scared or confused or sad or lonely, I want you to hold that cloth or that rock or look at those sticky notes and remember that you are not alone and that God loves you so very much. I invite you now to pray with me and maybe the adults who are with you would pray also. I'm going to speak first and then you can repeat after me. Dear God, sometimes I feel happy. Sometimes I feel sad. Sometimes I'm excited. And sometimes I am scared. Help me to remember that you love me and you are always with me even when I feel alone. Thank you for your love. In Christ's name, amen. Friends, as we prepare to go to God in Scripture, let us pray. Living and loving God in whom we move and find our being, open our ears to hear your word, open our eyes to see you in the world, and ready our feet to follow after you just realized that I forgot a Bible, so i got to go grab one. We've all forgotten things these days, right? Our second scripture comes from the Gospel of Luke. This is right after Jesus has called uh, the disciples, and this story takes place there. Verses 12 to 16 Hear the word of the Lord as it speaks to us today, wherever and whoever you are. Once, when he was in one of the cities, there was a man covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand. He touched him and said, I do choose. Be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him, and he ordered him to tell no one. Go, he said, and show yourself to the priest, and as Moses commanded, make an offering for your cleansing for a testimony to them. But now, more than ever, the word about Jesus spread. Many crowds would gather to hear him and to be cured of their diseases, but he would withdraw to deserted places and pray. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A friend and I were talking on the phone yesterday, and he read me a tweet that I thought described our predicament pretty well. It said, I never thought I would have to give up this much for Lent. Do you remember just three weeks ago when we were giving up chocolate and Netflix and the news? I also laughed this week. We we need laughter in this time. And and I, I laughed as I recalled a conversation that I had with a young person just after Lent had begun. I asked them what they had given up. Facebook, they said. Okay, I thought, Facebook. 
Seems like a good thing to give up. That's admirable, good work. And so I asked, will it be hard giving up social media? And it gave me a disturbed and surprised look. Give up social media? What are you talking about? I said I'm giving up Facebook, but you do know there's still Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok and Marco Polo. For those of you who didn't catch all of those references, don't worry, because we are all trying to catch up in this world of technology, are we not? But we have given up so much, haven't we? Though many would not claim Christianity as their faith, is it not true that right now the whole world is united in one collective Lenten journey together? It was just a month ago that we pressed those ashen crosses into our foreheads. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And now it feels like our whole world is covered in dust. All of us bearing those marks of vulnerability and mortality. This Lent, we are giving up much more than we had expected. Which makes me wonder what you have lost. What have you been forced to give up? The things that we have lost need to be named. All the way from the trivial losses to the insurmountable ones. We've certainly lost the assurance that toilet paper will be at Food Lion. We've lost jobs. We've lost the ability to be unplugged from our devices. We've lost spring break trips we had planned and daydreamed about at the office. We've lost shaking hands with one another before worship. We've lost going to the movies with our friends and family. We've lost eating out at Santos or Go Burrito. We've lost watching our kids play sports outside in the sun. We've lost taking in symphonies. We've lost March Madness, though I think we'd all agree March has been plenty mad already. We've lost control and security. And we've lost life. I don't know about you, but all this giving up for Lent has begun to slowly teach me how much of this beautiful and bright world I have too often taken for granted as the cherry blossoms bloom, the birds chirp. I am not sure that we will be able to find out who we are going to be after this and until we have named what we are leaving behind. And I hope you can find some time in the coming days in the stillness to name what you have lost and what you're afraid of losing. Because some things just need to be named and spoken out loud. Nobody said that giving up things for Lent would be easy. My friend and colleague Colin reminded me this week of something a wonderful Jewish theologian named Abraham Joshua Heschel once said. He said that we so often live the life of faith in the world of production. We produce, we work, we create, we build. Most of our lives are spent in the rat race where we're trying to earn grace, to build something for ourselves, trying to make it, trying to prove we are enough, trying to catch and grasp our worth. But the deep life of relationship with God, says Heschel, is not found in the world of production, but rather when we are brought down to our knees, down into pain, down into loss, down into fear, into grief and anger and befuddlement. 
my bet is that you have felt all of those emotions over the last week and maybe sometimes all together at the same time. How easy it was when things were normal to take for granted that most of our Bible is written to people on their knees. 400 years of slavery in Egypt, 40 years in the wilderness, 50 years in Babylonian exile. Never has the Bible been our story more than right now. As the world is forced to its knees, as the very air that we breathe and things that we touch feel dangerous to us, we are beginning to ask afresh the fundamental questions about human existence. Is the world beautiful or is it a cold, dark place? When all is stripped away, what will we become? What is going on inside of us in the chaos? What does faith look like when we've been forced to give up so much? When we have given up so much, it is important to remember that we are in good company. We are not the first ones to have our world turned upside down. Take Jesus' ragtag group of disciples. One day they were fishermen minding their own business, steady income. And then Jesus said those fateful words, Come, follow me. This is how Luke closes out that story. He says, they left everything. Like us, the disciples had lost control, lost everything that they had once known. And as if losing it all weren't enough, do you want to know what the first thing Jesus does as their fearless leader is? You've already heard it. When he was in one of the cities, there was a man covered with leprosy. Leprosy that was a disease that was highly contagious. The book of Leviticus outlines in immense detail an entire chapter's worth the step-by-step protocol one is to go through if they are infected. The Israelite priest would act like a sort of ancient CDC, inspecting and testing the person who was showing symptoms. If the test was positive, the leprous person was declared unclean and was quarantined for seven days. To be bodily unclean and quarantined meant no participation in worship, no public gatherings. It meant not just social distancing, but extreme social and cultural isolation. It was profound loneliness. And this man didn't just have leprosy. No, Luke says he was covered. Covered with leprosy. It was everywhere. And now this man remains nameless and leprosy, his disease, is all anybody knows about him. As if losing it all and following Jesus weren't enough, now the disciples find themselves in the presence of an infected man face to face with the possibility of the spread of the disease. But there is just something about Jesus. And as this leprous man crosses the six-foot barrier required for social, social distancing measures, I imagine the disciples are applying hand sanitizer in the background. Did you notice how this leprous man approached Jesus? When the man saw Jesus he bowed with his face to the ground and begged him. With his face to the ground, he begged him. I wonder if you've found yourself in that posture 
at all this week? I sure know I have. Face to the ground, not sure what to say, not sure what to do, not sure what to think. And with his face to the ground, the man mutters under his breath, Jesus, if you choose, you can make me clean. At first, Jesus does not speak. And then he does something that in this moment, in our time, reads unthinkable on the page. I will never read these words the same again after this pandemic. And then Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. We may be far from one another, but there is one for whom social distancing does not apply. I wonder if you could imagine Jesus standing in front of you while your face is bowed to the ground, socially isolated and just begging Jesus for some answers. I wonder if you could see Jesus reach out His hand and touch you, touch all of us. What do you, right now, in this very moment, need Jesus to reach out and touch? Maybe our prayer for today, in a time when we're not quite sure what to pray, should be simply, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. The good news is that He does choose. And we've all become familiar enough with the protocol now to know what will happen to Jesus when He touches all of the loss and fear and anxiety that now infects us. He too will become infected. He will feel it all. He will become it all. He will bear it all. You may have noticed in the story, the leprous man leaves healed and rescued and restored, but I wonder who's left to touch and heal Jesus? No, he will remain unclean. Friends, we are not in this Lenten journey alone. Be strong and courageous, for the Lord our God is with you wherever you go. Because the God we see and know in Jesus Christ will not be God without being with us. Will not leave us nor forsake us. God took on our flesh, our fear, our anxiety, and moved into the isolated neighborhoods of our existence even when they were a ghost town. We may be afraid of one another but God is not afraid of us. Jesus will not quarantine Himself off from this world. Immediately after Jesus touches the leprous man, Luke writes a profoundly timely phrase. It, it is as if Luke was penning these words 2,000 years ago with us in this situation in mind. But now, more than ever, the word about Jesus spread. <laughs> spread. Why now? Why with this? Why when God is unclean and infected, more than ever, the word spreads? We've come to shudder at that word spread. But as the virus spreads, I wonder what else will spread. I was blown away this week as I watched videos of Italians in extreme isolation singing songs and banging on pans to one another from windowsills and balconies in cities across the country. Spreading 
connection. Spreading song. Spreading community. I wonder, what will we spread? Because more than ever, the world needs hope to spread. Because more than ever, God needs the church to be the church. Because more than ever, we need to spread good news. Because more than ever, we need to let love be spread. Name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please join us in affirming our faith as Christians have done for generations. We believe believe in one God, creator of all things, sustainer of the world, giver of life, source of grace, God of love. We believe we see God's love in Jesus, God incarnate, who fed the hungry, healed the sick, taught God's truth, and suffered in love for the healing of the world. We believe that God's love is active still in the presence of the Holy Spirit, at work in the church and the world, for healing and wholeness, for peace and justice, for mercy and love, until God is all in all. We believe until that time, the church is called to be the body of Christ in the world, loving our neighbors, caring for God's world, serving all as Christ served us, to show God's love to all. Amen. Before we pray, I'd like to read a poem. This poem is written by the Reverend Sarah R. of the group A Sanctified Art. And in this time, our congregation at John Calvin is exploring what the wilderness is like. It's very timely. We didn't quite expect it to be this relevant in our lives. But this poem is called The Wilderness is a Place of Disruption. Listen now for these words. My grandfather was a good man, but he believed that wilderness emotions were not to be seen. Cry with the door closed, don't dwell on the negative. Chin up, kid, we've all been here before. My grandfather was a good man, but I'd like to say the wilderness is here to interrupt your previously scheduled programming. Like water in the desert. And setting the slaves free, the wilderness might be the very thing we need, the very thing we dream, the very thing we plead for. I guess what I'm trying to say is it never seems appealing to let a bird in the house, but if you do, then you might as well open every door and window. And if you do, then you might just find yourself basking in the light, dancing in the breeze, overwhelmed with the beauty that an open door brings. So I'm opening my door and inviting in the wind to rustle up my heart and start over again. For sweeping the truth under the rug has never gotten us far. So may the wilderness Be like a bird in your house. Throw open your doors. The truth must come out. Let us pray. God, our faithful shepherd, we depend on you for everything we need, for daily food, for guidance and protection, 
for healing and injury and comfort in sorrow. You respond in abundant provision. Thank you for your tender care of us. Thank you for soothing the wounds of this life. Thank you that in the presence of enemies, especially the last enemy of death, you are with us as shepherd, as host, and as home. Knowing your faithfulness in our lives, we bring before you the lives of others, the cares of the world, entrusting all things to your goodness and mercy. Bring healing to those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit. Bring release to those who are held captive by old hurts or new bonds that oppress and entangle. Bring freedom to those unjustly accused, relief to those burdened with debt, comfort to all who suffer from abuse of any kind. We pray for people living precariously in the midst of war. Protect, we pray, citizens and soldiers alike, and teach us to put away our weapons, taking up instead words of peace and reconciliation. By the power at work in Christ, break down the walls of hostility we build so that we may learn to live together graciously. We remember those living in the midst of drought, of famine, and of pandemic. We pray for rain to fall and crops to grow, and for generosity to overflow from our own hands and of our own resources, until all your children receive their daily bread, until all your children have clean water to drink, until all your children have adequate shelter and medical care. Compel us to be better stewards of creation so that our habitation is sustainable and responsible. Loving God, help us to see the world as you see it, to see others as you see them, and to see ourselves rightly too. Because you have come into this world for judgment, we can put our judgments behind. Pursue us all with your goodness and faithful love until goodness and faithful love fills every heart and informs every action. We pray these things in the name of the one who came that we might see, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to the time in our worship where we give to God generously all that we have and all that we are. Friends, we know that your financial picture might have drastically changed in this last week or weeks. And yet, in the midst of all the change and fear, giving generously can be a way of resetting the soul to remember that our money and our jobs do not determine us in the midst of all that we can still do, in the midst of all the ways we can still reach out to others. At First Prez and JCPC, staff are working hard to offer spiritual comfort, to serve the community as needs arise throughout this time. We invite you to give generously to further God's care of all people in the midst of this virus. 
check in the video description below to give to First Presbyterian and folks at JCPC are asked to continue giving via the mail. Friends, let us give to the God who is the giver of every good gift and who will sustain us through this time. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. Friends, let us pray. Receive now these gifts, O God, that your people have courageously and faithfully given, and use them to comfort the afflicted, to feed the isolated, 
to care for the sick, to encourage the downhearted, to tend to those in need, and to bind your people to one another and to you, O God, all for the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we now pray. Amen. Let us sing our final hymn together. It is well. Friends, be strong and courageous, and know that God is with you this week, wherever you are 
and wherever you go. Know that we do not leave the church, but we go out to be the church in the world. Whatever that means in this time and season, we do so knowing that the good news about Jesus may abundantly spread more than ever. It is our custom at First Presbyterian to uh, let you know that you may extend your hands to receive a blessing that it may cover and abide in you this week. So friends, may the love of God follow you wherever life may take you. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. And may the friendship and fellowship of the Holy Spirit bring you home rejoicing at the wonders you will see. Bring you rejoicing one day back into our doors. Amen.